So I'm out here fighting for justice and uh, housing as a human right. And um, my activism started um, through the public education system. And the more I looked and the more I followed the money, the more I realized that essentially there are large systems set up, global systems of financial capital that are set up to, to keep people trapped in poverty and, and reinforce structural racism and oppression that have been going on forever and ever, but now with new technology and new innovative financial systems of like pay for success and these other things, like it's gonna get really bad. And like you said, like I love Philadelphia. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been here since the mid 90s. So I'm not a native Philadelphian, but I've been here a long time. And I sort of feel like if there was a city to take on this system, like Philadelphia is that city, and, and North Philadelphia in particular, although I live adjacent to North Philadelphia, from what I've seen, this area is at the epicenter of a lot of these trends around displacement and gentrification and housing and push out and hostile takeovers of the education system and this poverty mining. But there's like a rich history of resistance and creative artistry in, in North Philadelphia. And I have the privilege of having time to know what's happening. Like the folks who live here know what's happening to them. They don't, they not understand the bigger picture. And so I feel like if we can come together and the people who understand the system and the points at which we can try to pr make pressure and expose what's happening and link it to people's reality, their day-to-day -day life, like people being, you know, the, the woman who just passed by who said that she had to quit working in order to qualify as a senior for a, an apartment that's affordable that's a one bedroom at $900 a month. I mean, it's crazy. And Jen, you had pointed out, uh, there was an article today that they, they had closed a community hospital, reopened it as apartments, and there are micro apartments renting for what, wasn't it also $900 or $1,000? For a 350 square foot. Right. So we like lose community assets and then meanwhile we have like precarious housing, like luxury, like luxury micro housing. Like that's just so strange. So things are out of whack and we're sitting here right now because um, tomorrow there's a, a gathering, the second annual gathering, it's called Total Impact. So what this is, this poverty mining project is called social impact investing. So they frame it like they're the good guys, they're gonna solve this problem. But what it really means is that once you create a global investment market in poverty, you're only ever going to grow poverty. Like you never create a market that will eliminate itself. Like it's not logical. Like this isn't even like political. It's just and because many of the folks who are doing this are Democrats. Yeah, and and it's, it's, a it is a business. The nonprofits are in the middle of it. So they're facilitating it. Um, for the most part, austerity has pulled tax income out of public services, so they're outsourced. But now there's this bipartisan arrangement where if you pay for success, and you have success metrics, then it's okay to outsource. That's what they tell themselves. But the reality is, is that the people who are trying to navigate social service systems, navigate addiction treatment, navigate public education, they're just data. They're just supposed to be people making data for these financiers to bet on their life. And that's what's happening. That's why there's like 70 speakers. We're putting these little wanted posters together. I mean, and these are like mostly white folks, very well groomed. They all have headshots and suits. And they're gonna be at 30th or 30 South 17th Street, just south of Market Street, for two days. And they've decided that Philadelphia is gonna be the Silicon Valley of impact investing. Like we have such deep poverty for them, poverty is like hitting a seam of coal. They are just gonna mine that. They're gonna mine poverty. And they are gonna profit from that poverty. And the people are just a commodity to make that happen. And it's, it's terrible. Okay, so, <laughs> and they want to do what? Like so essentially the plan is, and this will take maybe a decade before this all comes together. There are systems called digital identity systems, or federated identity. So it's not unlike your social security number, like there's a number, but now it's digital. It can live on your phone. And as we move to more um, 
public benefits, like your, your food, your SNAP benefits, or your housing voucher, or your education voucher once we get rid of public school and everything is just a free market, buy an online class, go to the library and buy a cooking class, go to the equestrian center and buy an equestrian class. But most of it will be online classes because that's all you're going to be able to afford with this voucher. Um, it can live on your phone. Uh, my Mayor Nuttig's in it. Oh yeah, he's in charge of all of it. He's the one who brought, who was with Bloomberg. That's why we have a New York City housing director. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're all in on it. It was his game. I mean, he was the smart one. His wife is a social impact investor. Lisa Nutter is with Sidecar Social Finance. Wow. She's working with Wharton. Yeah, no, it's been a setup for a very long time. It's only now really bubbling up because now they've got the technology that your identity can live on your phone and all your money can live on your phone and all your benefits can live on your phone. Only when you're in a protest and you live on your phone and they send the drone up to capture everybody's phones, they just wipe you clean. I mean, I'm not saying that's all in place yet, but that's where it's going. And your biometrics are on your phone. Your life is like, here's your retinal scan. Why don't you pay for your groceries? Oh, did you get a hamburger? Because you were really supposed to buy the apple, even though there's only like two old apples in your uh, you know, corner store, but you were supposed to buy the apple. So we're gonna ding you if you bought the thing at the price you could afford. And that's the way it's gonna be set up. But it's still like five, 10 years out because the technology has to catch up and that's what the blockchain is. But it may not be blockchain, but that's, Illinois, they're setting this up and they're piloting on refugees right now. Like the Syrian refugee population, it's all being piloted through the Global South, through USAID and the UN. So they're getting it figured out over there. Meanwhile, once they get it figured out, they'll bring it back. Like this is domestic. This is, we are the Global South of Philadelphia. I mean, y'all are, I mean, North Philly is. Right. So, can so I sorry. Question because you don't live in North Philly, but you're right next door to North Philly. Yeah. So, in your neighborhood, you don't see any gentrification. You don't see any of this going on in your community. So, Fairmount, which is where I live, has very little open space, like empty lots. They're they're the block, it's mostly intact and it's never been, because I, I think it wasn't redlined, right? Like people could get loans to keep up their houses and when, you know, that was, that was, I mean, we came in the 90s, but my understanding was like the, this area is redlined, people couldn't get money, they couldn't take equity out of their houses to, to keep these old buildings up, which are beautiful buildings if you have resources to keep them up, but most of them are 120 years old, right? That you need to put money into them. If you can't get that money, then the buildings go into disrepair and then you, then people leave because they maybe can't get work and they move out, they, they move away and then, yeah, and then we end up and the city comes in and takes all that stuff. And, and then once it's, it's good, they come back and they take it at a bot rock bottom price or they just take it from you through imminent domain, which is what Nadira is pointing out, like Jen's pointing out with the stuff that, that they took all of this imminent domain. People who own their properties took them away and are sitting on them as empty lots. Meanwhile, they're closing shelters and people need affordable housing. It's a shame and that's, that's why I'm here. It's just, that's why I'm here. Different mentality today. It seems hard. It seems it seems challenging. I don't say hard because only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge. So so I'm ready. I'm ready for this challenge. And I was I was built for this. I think that I think we all we all have a purpose in life. And mine and mine's going to take on its head that most that most of Away back from, away from, from. Impossible. 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 Some people say it's impossible. I see possibility.